Salutations, hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Cleaning and Restoring. In this one, I'll be doing a classic NES front loader. Now, let me explain myself. First of all, I'm sure you guys, if anyone watching this has seen my old NES video, you're probably wondering why I'm making another one about an NES. There's three reasons. One, I'm starting to remake all my videos because I know some of the older ones I made, I had like a side camera view instead of a top view, and it was really hard to actually see what was going on. So I'm going to start remaking them. Uh, two, this one's filthy. And anytime something's really dirty, I like to document it. So I figured why not restart with this one. And three, the um, the video of this that I made, I only get, get about halfway through taking it apart when I stopped because that's all I knew how to do at the time and I was afraid to go further. Now, I know, like I, you, I couldn't get this bottom uh, gray piece by itself. Now I can. <laughs> I've gotten much more skilled with it. I know what I'm doing a little bit more now with the NES. So I decided I'm going to remake this video. So the first thing you're going to do is turn the console over and there's three, or three, there's six screw ports. There's two on this end, two on this end, and then one, two in the middle. And they're all just standard Phillips head uh, screws. So you can go ahead and the first thing you're going to do is take out all six of those screws. So I've gone ahead and taken all four screws out, but before we take the lid off, there is one more piece we can take off before we do. You could have done this before you took the screws out if you really wanted to. It doesn't really matter though. This little piece right here, I'm not even sure what this does, but you pinch the two sides of it and it lifts. Lit, lifts off by itself and the reason I'm taking this off is because it has this big scuff mark right here so I'm going to get that off uh, separately. So I'm going to go ahead and set this aside. Obviously this is washable. So now you can turn it over and your lid should come off really easily like so. And it's not that bad on the inside to be totally honest. The exterior was really gross and still is. I don't know why I'm saying it was. But this lid is all just a uh, one piece. It's all washable by itself. I'm not going to take it apart any further because honestly I can't. So I'm going to set that aside, and now we're inside the console itself. This is where things get a little bit tricky, but not, not really at all, actually. It's very simple, to be totally honest with you. So going around this piece of RF shielding, which is this, just this top piece of metal, there's one, two, three, four. There's a fifth one behind this little heat sink right here. Five, six, six, and seven. So what you're going to do is go ahead and remove all seven of those screws, and then I'll be back with the next step. Alright, I've taken all the screws out, and one thing I do want to uh, make mention to before I uh, get any further, all the screws we've taken out so far, all, um, what, 13? Yeah. All 13 screws were exactly the same. You don't need to worry about isolating them. However, we are going to eventually, actually in the next step, and at the very end, get into screws that are different, and you're going to have to isolate them for those pieces. So you took all the screws out of this uh, RF shielding right here, and RF shielding just means piece of metal that protects the motherboard, basically. RF, you're going to take this RF shielding out, and you may hit some resistance, because right here, this little piece sticking up, it's stuck under there, so you're going to have to kind of pull it out this way, and then lift it up, like that. Sorry if that squeak bugged your ears. Now this is just a piece of metal, it is obviously completely washable uh, in its own, and I'm definitely going to wash this, there's all kind of crap on it from 18, 18, 1985. Okay, so here's where we run into a bit of an issue with screw differences. This uh, cartridge uh, loading tray thing, whatever you want to call it, this it needs to come out next. And there's uh, three screws down this side and three screws down this side. However, you may notice that each side has two silver screws. Now yours may be brass, however, they're still going to be a different length, so you still got to isolate them. Whether you're brass or silver, these two screws are going to be longer because they have to reach further down to actually grab something and hold this in place. So you're going to go ahead and take all six of these screws out, and remember that these two go in those specific holes, but I will remind you when we're putting it back together, so don't worry about that. This is where things get kind of convoluted, convoluted and tricky. I will also like to note, I did take out two extra screws. There was one right uh, here, and uh, one right where my screwdriver is pointing right here. They were two regular brass screws, and they're going to be brass no matter what uh, year your console is. Go ahead and take those out too, because it'll just get you ready for the next step while you're ahead. And so now we're going to remove the cartridge tray, whatever you want to call it. So what you have to do is it's going to slide out towards you, or in this case, towards the opening of the console. Basically, you have to lift it up as hard as it'll lift up and slide it out. Now it's going to be kind of hard. You got to do it just right, but eventually you'll get it off on its own like this free and it should still work normally. Uh, now this all in its own is washable. Again, I will recap everything washable. So now you're down to the board, the brain of the NES. This right here, this bad boy, this harmonica looking thing, is the 72 pin connector. 
If your NES isn't working and you're doing this, this is probably the reason why, because these things suck. They break all the time and they're impossible to get working again. I don't, I'm not going to do anything with this one. However, if you want to replace it, basically what you do is you just kind of lift up the board and you can actually just slide it off like taking a cartridge out of a game. It just slides off and to get it back on, you just kind of press it back on. It's kind of, it's a weird th thought, honestly, because you would think it's more con 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 complicated than that. Sorry, I'm stuttering a lot. I got two hours of sleep last night because of New Year's. But, so now we're going a little bit further, we're going to break it down, and I think we only have like four more screws after this, so, uh, yippee, because there's a lot of screws in this bad boy. Not like the N64, that was horrible. So, you're going to go ahead and lift up the motherboard, and I tend to lift by the 72 pin connector, it doesn't really matter. And you're going to notice that this piece of RF shielding gets caught right here. It's because there's plugs holding it in place. One of them is a controller port, and one of them is for the uh, buttons on the front. So, there's also this plug right here. So, you're going to go ahead and unplug all three things. So unplug the controller unplug the other controller and this one is kind of hard to get out so I may like shake and rattle but I'm not breaking anything trust me and unplug the, the power and the reset button this one's really in there though there we go all right so now that you got those out your motherboard is completely free by itself you can go ahead and clean that up separately this little metal piece tends to get really dirty so I'd suggest cleaning that with like a q-tip that's what I do set the motherboard up there because it's not washable so then this piece of RF shielding probably came loose while you were unplugging it, but if not, yours was probably sitting somewhat like that. So if yours was sitting like that, congratulations, you didn't give your uh, console as big of a migraine as mine. But so you can just go ahead and lift this out, it's by itself, that's washable as well. And so now you're down to little wires and trinkets that are left. You got your two uh, controller ports and this bad boy. So first we're going to take out uh, the power button and the little light. So there's two screws on each end of it. Now these are silver screws. Again, they're probably, I don't, I know for a fact they're a different length. I don't know if they're longer or shorter, but you're going to go ahead and take out those two Phillips head screws. Also, you turn your console upside down and you'll notice these two silver screws here. You could have taken those out at the beginning, but I didn't. I chose to do it at the end. You're going to also take out those. Make sure to separate these from these because they are two different types of screws. All right, I got all the screws out, so now we're gonna just do a little bit more dissection to it. Uh, this piece kind of lifts, you lift it up and pull it out. It, sometimes they're more difficult. This one was really easy, but sometimes, the last NES I did, I had to fight it to get it out. It was really hard, and I felt like I was gonna break it. But this, you can just kind of pull out, take the wire out. Obviously, it's not washable. So I set it off to the side. And these two controllers, basically what you do is there's this plastic piece, you're gonna push it off, and it has the little hooks at the top. This is washable, but obviously the controllers are not, or the controller ports rather. And these two, you can just uh, pull them through like that. It's really cool, actually. And uh, one shorter than the other one, I'm not going to show you, but this one is, well, I will show you. This one is significantly shorter than the other one, as you can see here. The shorter one is player number one, and the longer one is player number two. That's how you remember it, or if that helps you remember, rather. You'll notice whenever you're putting it back together that the wires won't reach the correct plugs if you put it the wrong ones in. But so yeah, we're completely done. So now I'm going to show you everything that's uh, washable with water and soap so that you can go ahead and do that. And then I'll be back with putting it back together. So obviously your bottom piece is washable. Both pieces of uh, RF shielding are washable. Your cartridge uh, tray loader dock thing, whatever you want to call it. The little controller port cover bottom plate and your lid to your console all washable so you can go ahead and wash those and clean your motherboard however you please to do it and i'll be back with putting it back together all right there's one thing i would like to note before uh putting everything back together which is what i'm about to do the lid if you want to break it down further like get these black pieces off or get the cartridge covery thing off by the way i'm really proud of how clean this came it looks so much better uh, if you turn it over, you'll see there's uh, two screws here and two, th two there. They're kind of weird screws. They basically have a circle in the middle and then a slot going across it, so they look like this. And you can just use a flathead screwdriver and you should be able to get them off. I'm not going to because this is already clean and dry and really does doesn't need done. But that's if you want to break it down any further, which I'm not going to do. So first, we're going to... Now we're going to put it back together. So first, we're going to start off with our base. We're going to put our uh, general electronics in. 
So find your uh, controller port that has the shorter wire, and that goes in the player one slot. You can just basically feed it back through. It won't stay like locked in place, but it'll go, or it'll go in at least. So now I have the controller number two port, and put that in the right spot. Make sure it's not upside down like I was trying to do. So then take this piece, and this piece is a little bit nicer because so it'll actually like kind of hold itself in place. But you basically just kind of gotta wedge it in like that, and it should stay. And if you'll remember, you had two screws holding that into place, and for me it's these two, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and screw that in place, but also uh, take this piece, the controller port cover, and to put it back on, you have to actually like line the top up first, and then put it in at the bottom. And then you have two different screws that look more like this. Those are the ones for the bottom of that. So I'm going to go ahead and put all my screws back in for those parts. <sighs> everything's locked in place and uh, what I'm gonna do now is where's the piece at I have all my pieces stacked together I'm just gonna take this and snap it back into place because I know I'll forget it at the end of the video it just snaps in place like anything else and we're actually gonna take this part and set it aside for right now and what you need is your main motherboard and the bottom piece of RF shielding that looks like uh, this because we're actually gonna put these together first because this hole right here has to line up with this uh, slot right here and it's kind of Hard to do so the first thing I would do is try to get that lined up it's not that hard but once you once you get it you'll know because it fits in really easily and so now this is kind of where it gets tricky get your bottom piece and what you have to do is drop this into place but at the same time you're gonna have to lift it kind of back out because all these wires need to be plugged back into their correct spot and it's pretty easy to remember because this blue one lines up here the long green one goes over here and the short green one goes right here because this, these do need to be plugged in under the RF shielding, so it needs to go this blue one, plug in like that, and then you can drop it back into place, this longer green one, and for the green ones, you see how there's a little rainbow on this side, and on this side there's not? You want the rainbow side facing up, that's how I remember it at least. And they plug, everything plugs in really easily, it's just a matter of getting it around the uh, RF shielding. So once everything's plugged in, make sure you get your wires as out of the way as you can, or at least so that your RF shielding pushes down and locks into place on all sides, which mine right now is because it's not moving around at all. So now you can go ahead and put in these two screws right here if you want to. I'm not going to because I just want to get to the next step for you guys to be uh, more efficient in the video and the cutting. So uh, you're going to take your cartridge uh, tray thing, and this is where it gets kind of complicated with screwing it back together. So slide it back into place. And what will happen is you'll probably put these two screws in too tight and this won't click down. So to avoid that, when you're putting in these two screws, leave them loose enough that and you can test this and it'll still work. So if you remember, these two holes right here are the regular brass screws. These two are the longer silver ones and then the two in the front are uh, long brass ones again. So go ahead and put in the two screws here and the six on the cartridge slot. Everything is currently screwed back together. Um, these two front screws, like I said, they're the main culprits of this not working. Uh, mine are pretty loose right now, but they're holding it in place well enough that this still works. So I'm happy with that. This is dirty right here. Uh, so now you're going to take your uh, top piece of RF shielding and fit it back over place. And remember, it kind of has to slide under this uh, heat sink right here. And uh, it should line up relatively easily. Make sure on this side that it's through the plastic peg. I don't know where it is. Where is that little sucker? There we go. Because if it's not through those, then you're just going to bend the metal out of place. Same with over here. This one doesn't stick up as much, but it'll still get in the way. There's also one in the back. So now you just have a pile of seven brass screws, and those go all around here. Again, after putting in, I know this is going to be a pain for you guys, and I'm sorry if you're having to do this, but literally after every single screw you put in, no matter where it is, test to make sure this works. Especially these front ones, but just do it for all of them to be sure, because that's what I always do, and that's how I get it to work. Because sometimes it'll be like a screw way in the back, and this won't work. That's what's such a bad design about these things. But I'm going to go ahead and put all the screws in, and then I'll show you guys from there. My RF shielding is all screwed back into place, and as you can see, it still works fine. So now it's time uh, to put the lid back on, and this is really easy because it's just a perfect rectangle. Just drop it back onto place. It may take a bit of finagling to get it perfectly lined up. Also, make sure you don't have wires caught anywhere around. Turn it upside down and put in your six screws, but again, test after every single screw to make sure the thing clicks down and do this screw last. 
I would say do all four corners, the back one, and then this front one, front middle one, last. Because that is 90% of the time the reason that the clicky thing doesn't work. You have to have that one pretty loose to get it to work, but it helps if you do the four corners and the back one first to save that one for last. So I'm going to do go ahead and do that with all the screws, and then I'll be back with the finished result of this Ness. Okay, everything's back together. My thing, my cl uh, clicky thing works fine. Uh, I think overall it honestly looks like a new console. I mean, this lid was completely destroyed whenever my friend gave this to me. My friend Tio, he gives me most of the stuff that I clean and restore. Uh, link to his channel in the description below. Uh, front looks pretty good. There's a scuff right there that I'm going to try to get off again, but I couldn't really get off while it was washing, so I don't see why it would now. The sides are both pretty good, minus the uh, rust on the AV ports, but I can't fix that. And the back doesn't look bad at all. Well, it has scratches, but I can't get rid of scratches. And the bottom wasn't dirty to begin with. So overall, it looks pretty good. It looks like a relatively new console. So I feel better refilming this because the first one was kind of poop. Uh, so thank you for watching, everyone. And uh, for more videos like this one, please leave a like or a subscribe.